Good evening, I'm John Troll and welcome to another edition of Business Beat Live Special Edition. And joining me on tonight's edition of Business Beat Live Special Edition, just in from Georgetown, Texas, is Rocky Castleberry. Uh, Rocky has written a book entitled Creating Wealth for the Average Guy, and we've also uh, been informed by Rocky that uh, the new book, uh, the new print when it comes out, will say, uh, and gals, so that the gals won't be disappointed as well. Rocky has been discussed on Paul Harvey's radio show and featured in the money section of USA Today. Uh, he was a millionaire by the time he was 30. A few years later, he was a negative millionaire with a million dollars in debt and no income. And by the time he was 36, he had worked his way back to positive millionaire status. And he's going to reveal some of the strategies, some of the things that he learned. And uh, I might say, uh, before we start the show this evening, that prior to starting it, we discussed several different strategies that he had mentioned. And Rocky, all I can say is I wish I was 20 years younger. <laughs> But we may have to leave some of the strategies to our viewers. But in any event, welcome to Business Beat Live Special Edition. Okay, thank you, John. Pleasure to have you come up all the way from Georgetown, Texas, just to be on Business Beat Live. So, creating wealth for the average guy. So many books that come out there are made for this millionaire, that millionaire, the people that got a gazillion dollars in wealth. And you're basically talking about uh, uh, the average guy. That's right, John. What I did is I own several businesses and there's a lot of things you can do with money and money behaves the same way whether you're talking about a million dollars you're talking about a hundred dollars and what I did is I took a lot of my business concepts that I've learned through the hard knocks over the years and I brought them down to a personal level so that each person can apply these to their own life and whether you're starting a business or not you can still use your own money to create wealth. Okay, so tell me, tell me what one of the first things is that you talk about in the book. What is, okay. uh, how, do, how do we start this, uh, this world of wealth for the average uh, guy? Well, my first chapter is called Get Over Yourself. And I know that sounds a little bit of funny, but you know, as we go through life, we base all of our decisions based on our past experiences or past failures. But Bill Gates said that success is the worst teacher. And you would think that sounds funny coming from Bill Gates, but what that means is if you are successful at one thing and you keep relying on that one thing, times change, things change around you, and what's going to happen is you're going to eventually become a failure because as times change you have to innovate and you have to move forward. Well, of course, that's true of so many businesses, basically, have you, particularly in the technology field, whatever, say the iPhone or something like that. Well, it may be a great product for Apple now, but they've got to have something else on the drawing board to come in at a point in time. But you start off talking about basically the, uh, uh, what was the comment you made a moment ago? And I, I've lost my train of thought here, but um, you, oh, you're talking about success and learning from success, but don't most of us, or many of us, learn from failure as well? That's exactly right. You know, when we go to school, and this is kind of backwards, you know, if you make a poor grade on a, on a test or on a, on a project, you're chastised. But see, as I go through life, I've learned more from my failures. For example, when I lost all my money, I learned more from that one experience than you could ever learn from getting an MBA or, or getting a degree in finance. Well, and of course, we know why you learn so much from it. The degree, basically, is the theoretical work in the college exactly. classroom. What, what happened to you, basically, was right out there in the business field, and you saw it firsthand. Exactly. I got hammered. And uh, let me give you a little, little story when I was growing up. Uh, I grew up on a Texas ranch, you know, working cattle, riding horses and all that. Geez, I guess you must have. It was Georgetown, <laughs> Texas. Can I find Georgetown, Texas on the map or do I have to do a Google search to find it? <laughs> You'd probably have to do two Google searches really? to get it. But uh, uh, anyway, as we'd drive around the pickup, me and my brother would start getting a fight. And what would happen is my dad would reach over and he'd thump us in the head. And, uh, you know, if we got the message the first time, we'd get fussy. But you know how kids are. Usually we had to get thumped in the head two or three times before we finally got the message. Well, that's the same way in life. You know, as we go through life, we're going to have little failures. But see, what you do is you take your failures, and then you learn from your failures, and then you learn how to move forward from that. And uh, if you don't, then you're just going to keep making the same mistake every time. Now, let me pose this question to you, Rocky. You talk about learning from your failures, particularly we're talking about principally people in business, although, of course, it could be in your personal life as well. But let's stick to the business angle of it. Supposing you were to counsel somebody that has failed in business. Uh, they're in bankruptcy, for example. Would you suggest perhaps that they do something, I mean, should they do something on a computer? I mean, using a word program, that should they write down some things? I mean, when you talk about learning from it, should they have maybe some sort of like an analysis of this happened to me, uh, and this is maybe some corrective steps I might take, or this happened to me, or whatever? Or should it just simply be a mind process? Well, you know, most of what I do is a mind process, but uh, I still do take notes, and in my business I do have a lot of notes, and we create manuals, and... Uh, what you need to do, and here's what I do in business, and you can do in your personal life. I have three things that I do. First, I innovate. 
And what innovate is, that's the ideas I come up with to uh, apply to my business. For example, if we're going to do a new product, we say, okay, let's innovate, let's create the product. Okay, the next thing I do, I implement. And what that means is I take my idea and I actually put it to paper and put it to work and start working that through my business. And then the last part, and this is the most important, John, you need to quantify. In other words, as you go through the implementation process, you need to quantify the results. Okay, if it's not the results you want, then you need to go back to the innovation stage, work on it, see what happens, see what's wrong, and then re-implement your changes, quantify, and then go back. It's just like a coach. Okay, a coach will play a football game, and uh, as he goes through the football game, what would happen if the coach waited till after the game was over, watched the game films, and said, okay, we should have made this formation, or we should have did that formation? What would happen? He'd lose the game. Well, in our business or in our personal life, in our personal investments, we need to quantify as we go through. We need to change our formation, much like a, a coach would. Uh, what's funny is just last week I was talking to my cousin. And he made the comment, and we were talking about the book. He said, you know what? When you make an investment, the die is cast, and you just have to play it out, and whatever happens, happens. I said, you know what? You could not be more wrong. Uh, because, like, for instance, let's say you're investing in the stock market. Well, maybe uh, a condition will change with what you invest in, and maybe you need to take that, innovate, implement, and move to a different stock or a different investment. Well, of course, it's interesting, too, that you make the analogy to a coach, particularly a football coach, because it's well documented that you Texans know a lot about football. Oh. The, the high school football teams that are so great down there, the college teams, of course, you've got the Dallas Cowboys, the, that sort of thing. So uh, uh, that's... Uh, you certainly have. It's, it's a great, a great. Well, analogy. you know what's funny is, is I've always heard, and I don't know if this is true, that one of our high school games in Texas is larger than a than a, a college game here on the Northeast Coast. Uh, You're talking about the attendance. The attendance, yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a big thing. College uh, football is a very big thing in Texas. And speaking of football. Tom Landry. Have you heard of Tom Landry? Well, oh, have I ever? Yeah. He really knows football as far as football. Oh, yeah. remember Tom Landry. One of the greatest coaches ever. But uh, what happened to Tom Landry? You know how he kind of lost his position and, and, and eventually left the business. And do you know why? I don't. Okay. In the 70s and early 80s, he came up with the most innovative formations and innovative ideas within the football realm. And what happened is, just like Bill Gates said, he relied on his past experience and his past ideas. Well, as football game evolves and people start to figure out his formations and how to defend that, then his ideas become less effective. And so what he should have done is came up with more innovative ideas, more formations, and, and move forward. But he didn't, and, and eventually he, he started losing games. And I think if you remember, he was in a very bad slump in a very big losing streak whenever uh, he decided to get out of the business. Because I have to point out too, basically, Rocky, when you talk about one of the greats up there in football, don't forget Vince Lombardi. That's right. He wrote a couple of great books, but he was one of the great coaches too. So I guess they both kind of ranked right there at the top. So you, you related a story to me earlier about, and uh, this is maybe a little bit off this subject here, but you talked about, uh, and then when we talked over the telephone here a week or so ago, when you were down in Texas, about uh, a project that you had your younger daughter or your daughter do, basically. Yes. Uh, I think that would be of great interest to our viewers. Would you relate that to us? Sure, absolutely. 